Hennepin County Medical Center is a major level one trauma center in Minnesota, and as such, sees many patients with head trauma. It's no surprise that we spend a lot of energy trying to find or exclude intracranial hemorrhage. Fortunately for us, HCMC was among the first facilities to implement SWIP, which we use in all trauma cases, and frankly, in nearly all MR scans of the brain. We pride ourselves here on being an innovative radiology department, underpinned by leading edge equipment, and by that I mean both hardware and software. SWIP has become an integral part of this software suite. We probably examine around 55 patients a day on our three Philips MR scanners. Of course, many radiologists use SWIP to answer a specific clinical question, but we find that including it as a standard part of the MR exam is incredibly helpful. It lets us pick up pathologies that are often not apparent when using more conventional MR pulse sequences. It has helped us detect microbleeds, cerebral amyloid angiopathy, and vascular lesions that we weren't necessarily looking for and that might have otherwise gone unnoticed. A great thing about SWIP is that it's both robust and reproducible. It's highly sensitive to blood products and calcium. I can't imagine performing a brain MRI without it. It's simply a mainstay of what we do, both in routine and tailored exams. For patients suspected of suffering a stroke that are still within the window of potential therapy, we run three sequences within 10 minutes and one of them is always SWIP. This gives us additional insight regarding microhemorrhage and allows us to assess deep medullary veins, which often offer prognostic information in the setting of acute stroke. SWIP lets us see the susceptibility changes of an acute thrombus. It also helps us to ascertain whether that thrombus broke up and to visualize any hemorrhagic conversion. And for neurodegenerative conditions like MS, phase images, and SWIP may help us differentiate calcium from hemorrhage. The high resolution and fast acquisition times are real advantages, helping us keep scans short especially in stroke and trauma patients. And reading and interpreting the data is also straightforward, and of course, is always done in conjunction with the other pulse sequences. In short, our neuroradiologists like it, and our clinicians have come to expect it. 